Hey everyone, Wayne Fox here. Thought I'd do a quick video about my teleprompter. Oh, now before you hit the back button, let me explain. I'm not talking about a teleprompter used in the typical fashion which you read a script from. If you watch my videos, it's pretty obvious I don't use scripts. I tend to do a video and often I have to repeat it two or three times, I'll watch it and realize I needed to say something a different way. Once in a while, there's some awkward jump cuts because of the way that I do them. But I found out by the time I write a script out, and then I read it, I'll tend to stick with that, even though it's like not right. Half the time I go off script anyway, so I gave up on it. However, I do wanna see information, and if you're someone that does Zoom calls, or FaceTime calls, or you're doing other things where you want to see information while you're recording yourself or videoing yourself for any reason, you might find that my solution works pretty good because what I wanted was a way to extend a Mac desktop or Mac screen to the front of my camera so I can put anything I want up there. Now I got the idea because I saw the video about the Elgato teleprompter that's coming out and a lot of people give it great reviews because it has a screen attached and that screen works as an extra display to your computer which allows you to do what I'm trying to do. Problem is it's kind of little. I wanted to be able to use my iPad Pro which is really big and I can get a lot of information and if it's far enough away I can still make it big enough I can see it. And so my solution was, first of all, find one that'll hold it, and that wasn't too hard. But the other challenge is, how do I flip my iPad screen while it's working as a display? And I find a solution for that, and it's not too difficult, and it only costs $15. Let me show you first the teleprompter I bought that does this, and then we'll talk very briefly about the software because I'm going to just link you to another video by a, a fellow that talked about how to set it up for this very thing. Uh, the software is pretty complicated and pretty powerful, but to set it up isn't too challenging, and once you do it once, then it's easy to set up from then on out. So let's take a look at the teleprompter first. So I bought this one from Amazon. You notice the company name's kind of funky. Uh, you see all kinds of these really funky names on Amazon. If you wanted to look that up, basically it's a thing Amazon did to try to get companies more legitimate, so they had to be an actual company, and so they People created all these really weird LLCs to meet Amazon's criteria. Not sure if it helped. They're trying to filter out a lot of the stuff that's not real good. Now, I have bought a couple things from this brand, New Newer, <laughs> Newer, and I've been okay with those, so this is the one I decided to go with. A uh, little pricey because it is designed to hold a large iPad, an iPad Pro, or a whole smaller one, obviously. Not much point if you want to do something smaller. For example, I've got this little one, which is designed to hold just like a small iPad or a phone. And if you're doing a script in a phone, this actually was probably all you need. Uh, I like it really well for that. I'll put a link in it below if you're interested in one small like that. So it comes with this little case. It's kind of flimsy and cheap, but it's not bad. And as you can see, when I take it out, I wish they would give you a large enough cloth to cover the whole mirror. But it's got the mirror here. It swings forward. This locks in. And then you can change the angle. This slides out to hold, as you can see, a very large pad. You can lock that down here. I'll show you this in just a minute. Your camera mounts here. In my case, I have to add a little platform to get it a little higher. Uh, it's designed for a little bit bigger cameras, so you might have to find a way to raise your camera up a little bit. And then, of course, we've got to find out which one of these we use to balance the weight of the camera wherever it needs to be and the iPad so it's not balanced. Now, one thing most time is going to be tipping forward a little bit, so you might need a little more back weight than you think. Let's go ahead and set it up and just kind of show how that works. Forgot to mention, it does come with a little remote. I assume you can advance a keynote or advance your script, so it might be handy. What I need to set it up is, first of all, I need a way to mount it to my tripod. This has got kind of a leveling base, which I can adjust to about 20 degrees. And I've got an Arca Swiss mount on it, so I need a bracket to mount to the bottom. It has several holes, and I've got to decide which hole will balance it. I've got to figure out a way to raise the camera. I don't know if you can see this or not. But if the camera's right down on the bottom, it's a little too low. Now I found I've only got to raise it about that far. Anywhere in here works. Anywhere from three quarters of an inch to two inches would work. And I happen to have also an Arca Swiss style bracket that I can mount here. As you can see, that will position anywhere here. So I've got to get it back far enough that it can see the screen or go through the screen without seeing any of the stuff around it. And you know, I can also adjust the angle of the mirror. And then the last, I've got to make sure that 
with the iPad here and the camera here, whatever bracket I choose will balance. So the first thing I'll do is set the camera up, then I'll put the iPad on it and try to find where it balances. And at that point I can mount it on the tripod. You might want it slightly back weighted because most of the time it's gonna be slightly tipped down when you use it. Uh, and when you're standing, maybe not, but when I'm sitting it is. Let me put it all together instead of having you watch it and we'll put it on the tripod and show you the finished product. Okay, I've got it all set up. A couple things to note. There are a couple of spring-loaded bars up here. You want to make sure they're locked in tight. There's a rubber pad here, and you can push this back and then lock it in place with these big thumb screws so that it won't slide very easily. Uh, you don't want to move, and it'll slide right out off on the floor. As far as where the camera's positioned, uh, it's very easy to move it. Just loosen the knob and move it. Where you're going to position it is going to be based on the focal length. Uh, right now, I'm set at 20 millimeters, so I have to be somewhat close. The best way I've found to figure that out is just point everything at the wall. Uh, first of all, make sure that the tilt is right so you can see your screen uh, and then point at the wall and then you can see if there's anything in front of your lens. Notice it has this black cloth to shade the light out. You don't want any light coming from the back side or you'll get a reflection that will show in the video. What I found is if I leave the lens cap on, it helps keep it away and then I might have to pull and tweak it. There are a couple little pull tabs that let you snug it up tight. Uh, works pretty good. It's here somewhere. Anyway, here's the one on the back. Um, right now, you'll notice that I have it set and it's a little front heavy. And so what I've either got to do is I've either got to move the bar on the bottom, which is mounted to my tripod, forward a notch or two, and that might be too far, or I need to move the camera back a little bit if I can. Uh, I think at 20 millimeters, I can move the camera back another inch or two. It's not bad enough. I think it's actually, even though it is front heavy, I think it'll work okay. I don't think it's gonna drift over time. It's pretty solid. What I've got it mounted on on this tripod is a leveling base, which I have about 24 degrees of rotation. It's not a full a tripod head, but it works really good for what I'm going to do. Most people don't have that, but a regular tripod head should give you plenty of adjustment. One other thing I thought I would mention really quick that I like about this particular teleprompter, some of them have a mirror assembly which doesn't include a way to hold the camera. So you've got to rig up a way to put the camera on its own tripod, or you've got to figure out some kind of an arm that'll hold the mirror. This one's really solid, and as you can see, it has a full platform, so it's capable of holding your camera. Once you put it together, it's really one piece with a single attachment to your tripod. Pretty well balanced because you got some places to move it. So that to me, that's a big plus. Like I said, this is kind of a odd brand and it's really not a famous brand, but this one I really like. They've seemed like they've done a good job with it and it's, it's well made. It's not maybe top of the line, but for the money, it's really pretty good. So I'm gonna set it up in my normal position, how I use it, and I'll shoot a little video on Monday that shows me using it, what I see. Uh, you'll see how nice and big the screen is. Talk a little bit about Better Display, the software that I use to flip it so I can read it. Uh, I'll link you to that video that talks you how to set up Better Display. Uh, he does a really good job. It's a pretty complicated program, but to do this particular stuff, is it took me just a few minutes and he walks you through it really well. So see you in a couple days and I'll show you how I actually use it. And hopefully you find this helpful. So this is my setup using the teleprompter. I have my little Sony RX100 back here. It shows a view similar to what I see. I've set up my previous teleprompter next to it, and as you can see, the text size is quite similar. And if you're just reading a script, it's actually pretty good. However, the larger teleprompter offers me much more information, something which can be quite helpful, especially if you go off script like I do quite a bit and you're trying to figure out a good place to get back on track. Since this teleprompter is just using Sidecar, it's functioning like a secondary display to the Mac, and I can put anything I want there. Right now I'm using an app called Teleprompter. It's a Macintosh app, and unlike most of the teleprompter apps for the iPhone and the iPad, it doesn't require a cloud service and subscription, and enables all its features, you just need to pay the $40. And you can try it for, I think, two, maybe three weeks for free. It's actually a really good app. It even has voice speech recognition, so your script will move as you read, which is what I'm doing right now. It also will flip the text, so I don't need any additional software to make it appear correct on the teleprompter. I might try reading scripts a little more as time goes on, but my main use of the teleprompter is just to put up information. So my goal was to have the teleprompter be an extended display of my Mac so I can put anything I want there. The challenge with that is to flip the screen so it appears normal in the mirror. And for this, I'm using an application called Better Display. 
It allows you to set up what's called a virtual screen, which you can then display on any of your normal displays. And that virtual display can be set to flip horizontally and or vertically, so it appears normal on the teleprompter. Let me just go to my Mac and show how I set that up. And then what I'm going to do is link you to another video, which gives you really in-depth process of step-by-step -step how to set it up to work if you want to try it. Okay, I've got my iPad set up. You can see the iPad screen. First thing I need to do is set that as a sidecar display. So I'm just gonna go up here and hit screen mirroring and then say use the iPad Pro as a secondary display. And you'll see now that I have a display and I've even got a, a keynote on there. Let's get that keynote off of there for a minute. You'll notice under my display settings here, I now have the three displays. I'm now gonna open better display. And better display will give me this new menu bar. And what I can do is I can say, I want you to stream the virtual screen to the sidecar display. And now I should be able to move my keynote presentation over onto that display. And you'll notice it's not backwards. That's because if you look over here under the sidecar display settings, you'll see that I've flipped it. If I turn that off, that's what it would look like. But this allows me to flip it. I can do all kinds of things with it. So there's no way I can't, no matter what the iPad said, I can get it flipped into the mirror so it appears normal. One other thing I've done is I've got my Mac set up so that if I hold control and I uh, scroll the wheel, it will zoom in. So sometimes when I'm reading this, I, it's still a little too small, but I can zoom out, zoom in, and it gives me a really nice display a teleprompter to see things other than uh, just a teleprompter script. As I said, I can put anything I want up there, anything that I can put on my Mac screen, I can put up there. A lot of times it's just some statistics. As you saw when I read my script, I'm not really good at reading scripts. So a lot of times I just have an outline or some basically summary statements of things I wanna cover. Anyway, because it's really large, it gives me a lot of flexibility. And if you're using something like Zoom where you've got three or four faces on there and you want to appear like you're talking directly to them and not looking off to the side. So I see some podcasts that are actually doing YouTube videos and often they're not looking at the camera because they're looking at their screen. And it's actually a little odd. I don't know if it's annoying or not. Uh, one of them I thought was interesting. I watched the Kelsey brothers, the football players. They do a podcast and Jason, the entire video, he's like this talking to the camera and he's looking over here. His camera's over here. And something like this would probably help him quite a bit because then he could manage his computer. Now it is still sort of small and it's far enough away that it's not awesome, but it's definitely better than the little one that I've been using. Well, if you have any questions on this, just let me know. I'll be glad to answer what I can. I'm not an expert on teleprompters, but I thought this was quite useful in a different way. That's why I decided to do the video. Hey, make sure you subscribe and uh, like the video. Thanks for watching. See ya.